Okay, so today I thought I would go over my complete parts list for my hybrid off-grid solar power system that I built a couple of years ago. It's uh, 8,280 watts on the collector, uh, about 8,800 watts on two inverters, uh, double that peak, a 370 amp hour battery bank, and it produces for me about 25 kilowatt hours a day, although I run it almost up to 40 kilowatt hours a day. And anyway, I thought I'd put together this complete parts list so, you know, people who are trying to build the same thing, you'd have the entire list. Um, if you want, if you're interested in having it in a spreadsheet, just uh, leave a comment with your email and I'll send you a link to the Dropbox. You can download it and then you can go back and delete your email if you want. So let's get started. Okay, so this is my complete parts list. I'm going to go through it kind of quick. So let's get started. First, we got the panels. I bought the Solar World 345 watt panels. You got 24 of them. It comes out to about 8,200 watts, somewhere around there. And just uh, these prices take with a grain of salt. This was from uh, December of 2016. So, and these, some of these were negotiated prices, but uh, they're close. Okay, then we got the racking system from Iron Ridge. I got the 11 foot rail sections and hooked them together, put four of them in a line, so 44 feet long. Uh, they're the XR100s, and I had 16 of them. I used the bonded splice to hook them together, which is the XR100 splice. We did eight of those. You got a flash foot, they come in six piece kits. Um, highly recommend you use these flash feet. Um, rather than just bolting a piece of angle to your shingle with some roofing tar. This is a much better way to do it. And in general, the entire racking system from Iron Ridge, um, definitely, I mean, either Iron Ridge or one of the others, but I re highly recommend going with a racking system. I haven't had any problems, and if we have a hurricane, these panels are not coming off. It, it'll take the roof off if they come off. Okay, so clamps, these are the UFO clamps hold the solar panels down. Got all the part numbers here. Grounding lugs, uh, the stopper sleeve, wire clips, end caps. The whole system was 1472 for the racking system. All right, let's move on to some of the electronics. I'm using the Magnum system. So I got the inverters, 48 volt inverters. That's the MS4448. They put out 4,400 watts continuous and 8,800 watts peak. Of course, if you double that up, so I got two of them, and you can go up to four. They run about 2,000 a piece or so, something like that. The dual panel enclosure, uh, this is kind of pricey. It's uh, $1,600, but uh, yeah, you could get by with just doing a single and jam it all in there. Be, it's a lot tighter, a little harder to wire. But I think that's one place maybe you could scrimp a little bit on this system. Or just do it like this. I'm happy with it. Uh, the Magnum router, I got the RTR. There's an advanced version of this now. I'd recommend you go with the advanced version. I think it's the, uh, it might be the ARTR. Charge controllers, PT100. Got two of those. They have uh, like up to 100 amp charging capacity each. Really nice. I haven't had any problems with any of this stuff. The dual backing plate. Uh, again, you know, some of this stuff it seems like, oh, uh, why not just bolt it to a plywood? Well, this thing has, it's metal, it's better fire protection. All the holes are already drilled for you. It bolts right up there, nice and neat. If you're going to spend, you know, $26,000, another 120 bucks Ain't the end of the world, you know. Uh, battery monitor. I think I only have one of these. I don't know why I put two. But that's the MEBMK. $144. The batteries. Okay, so I like these lead acid batteries from Trojan. The L16RE-Bs. Uh, I think they work great. I, I think some people have had problems with them. Um, 
and maybe I haven't had them long enough to find out, but I've had them two years. With, they seem just as good as the day I bought them. Uh, they're just cranking. Uh, I've got them. I've got them set up with this Magnum system, though, where it it totally controls the whole charging process automatically. Um, the the you know voltage levels are all set, and I mean, just you know, the only thing I do is that I top them off with water once a month. It takes five minutes with the auto watering kit. So I think if you take care of them and they're charged properly over their entire life, hopefully they're going to last me 10 years, but uh, we'll see. You could always swap that out for some lithium, you know, uh, Tesla type system, <laughs> whatever you want. <clears throat> the battery box I built from, just from lumber, from Lowe's. This vent, it's a Zephyr 48 volt DC um, venting system, cost a hundred bucks. So that's kind of expensive, but you gotta remember you're venting flammable gas, hydrogen, right? So the fan in here is isolated so that, you know, it doesn't spark. Uh, the spark is isolated from the hydrogen. That's why it's a hundred bucks. Surge protectors. Yeah, you, you don't have to get these, but you can wreck your system if you have a surge, so it's better safe than sorry. Um, I guess I harp on this too much, but it's like, yeah, I spent a lot of money on this system, um, but it's bulletproof. You know, I don't have to worry about it. I built it two years ago. I haven't done anything to it. It just works, and it runs our whole house. So if you skimp on stuff here and there, you might have problems. Okay, what else do we got here? DC wire. We've got PV cable. This is the cable that you connect um, the solar panels, the H4 connectors, that run from your panels down to the combiner box. I got them in 100 foot sections and you know cut them in half, and I explain all that in the series. But um, then the THHN cable. This is like hookup cable. I didn't use anywhere close to 500 feet. I probably used 80 feet. <laughs> Um, and then the green is for the ground. Battery cables, the red and black, got these off Amazon. They're the four aughts, real heavy duty, like welding cable is what it is. And they're 134 bucks. And I got two sets of them. And then of course the lugs that go with them and they're coated, really nice. Uh, four aught with the three eighths and three eighths inch holes cut in them. Those are 50 bucks for 25 pieces, so I need, you need two of them, you need 50, if you have 16 batteries. The heat shrink, red and black, uh, bare copper wire grounding, 100 foot of that. That's going to run from your panels down your combiner box as well, and other places. DC breakers. Okay, in the combiner box I use the 20 amp, actually I use the 15 amp 300 volt DC breakers. I'd go with the 15s. Um, I've never tripped a breaker yet with the 15s. I think I actually have three 15s and one and two, three 20s in the other for some reason, but none of them have tripped. Uh, PVN to controller. Yeah, okay, that's the where you're running from the combiner box into the charge controller. Goes through two of these 50 amp 300 volt DC breakers. Charge controller out, so from the charge controller out to the battery bank goes through another set of breakers. Those are the 100 amp, um, 150 volt DC breakers. Battery monitor, okay, this is for the battery monitor kit. I only used one of these, and it's a two amp, 150 volts. All right, AC wire. <clears throat> this is the heavy duty wire that runs all the way from my solar power system out in the garage through a crosswalk about 80 feet into the house. And I run in two sets of them because I have two transfer switches in the house. So it's the 6.3 heavy duty cable. It's actually got four conductors. That stuff is probably more expensive than that now, I would guess. AC breakers, AC input from garage panel. So this is the AC into my solar power system. 
60 amp, 220 volt AC breakers. Just have one of them, and it's, I can tell you that I never use this. <laughs> My system is disconnected from AC all the time. The only time I'd ever use that is if we had a, an emergency or something. But I don't want it connected to the utility. So it just keep, keeps all those surges and stuff off my system. Uh, AC input from main panel. Uh, I'm not even sure I even use that. <laughs> Probably not. So cross that off. The combiner boxes are the MN PV6250 discos. Uh, it's got the big red handle on it. It's outside, so the fire department can come and turn the power off to the system. I have two of them, they're expensive, but they do the job. It's done right. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, main transfer panels are the Reliance. This is another place people would probably look to cut this out of the system, just put one big transfer switch. Be a lot cheaper versus 720 bucks I spent on two of them. Uh, but this gives me so much flexibility. I can run any circuit in our house. I can select, the, you know, this and that to be on utility and the other three on solar. And I can switch them back and forth all day long, do whatever I want. Total flexibility. I love having this. Makes the system a lot of fun. And you can get a lot more out of it. All right, then I have a big transfer switch. This is how the power would get from either a generator or the utility into the system. So again, I almost never use this. They're both off all the time. But if you needed to run the generator, that's how it would get in through this transfer switch or the line uh, utility. The secondary breaker panel is, um, I, I don't run directly off my solar magnum panel to my transfer panels. I run it into this breaker panel to protect the line across the crosswalk. That's all it really does. So they're individually uh, switched in there. Maybe that's where those 50 amp breakers were used. <laughs> Alright, so the uh, this is what I get more questions on than anything else is where did I buy these wireways? These 6 by 6 by 72 cable trays that's how you hide all your stuff, make it look real nice and clean and protect it. I got them at CED, their uh, national chain. <clears throat> I forget the actual name of them, but they're in that video where I, un where I unboxed them. I got more info there. All right, wireway end caps. Yeah, okay, flex conduit. I didn't use too much of that. Miscellaneous wire conduit, etc. This is all the trips to Lowe's while I was building it, buying random stuff, and I did keep track of all my receipts. So it was $2,885. That also includes some tools and uh, like the 30 amp plug where the generator comes in through and the cable for the generator, stuff like that, random kind of stuff. So total 26245 not cheap, but we get a 30% discount takes off 7,873 for the grand total of 18,371 out the door. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.